Good morning and welcome once again as we uh, come before you uh, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, today is a very special day. It is Mother's Day. Uh, we will be celebrating uh, 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 those uh, dear ladies that, uh, that we love so much who gave birth to us and uh, who uh, was always there. And, and as we prepare to go, uh, my scripture reading today will be from uh, Genesis I'll be reading from the third chapter and the 20th verse, and uh, then I will jump over in a moment to the uh, 17th chapter. And uh, Moses writes to us uh, from the Torah, uh, And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. And so we are told in the word of God that God created mothers. And he did not create women just to be a companion to man, but to be the mothers of all who exist and who live. Uh, he also tells us further in the uh, uh, book of Genesis, in the uh, 17th chapter and the 15th verse, then God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless her and also give you a son by her. Then I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of peoples shall be from her. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we want to thank you for our mothers, for those who, Lord, birthed us, for those, Lord, as well, who helped raise us. Lord, we forgive those who abandoned us and left us for others, but you were there. And we give you praise, Lord, for those who took their place. We ask, Lord, that you would bless all of those who loved us, who cared for us, who sacrificed for us, and who gave to each one of us life. Bless the mothers this day as we praise your holy name and preach thy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And as we come before you today and we talk about our mothers and how God has given us this, we, we share fond memories, all of us, uh, about our mothers. We remember the loving care that uh, they gave to us. Uh, we remember those precious moments when we could go to our mothers with our pain, share with her our disappointments, be able to weep and to cry and to feel her comfort as she embraced us and kissed us and told us that it was all right that she loved us. We can readily recall the loving way that she would look at us and the way that she spoke to us, the way that these mothers cared for us when we were sick, nursed us back to health, sacrificed so much for us. And that is what Genesis tells us about Eve and also about Sarah that God created mothers, that he created these special women, not just to give birth, but to sacrifice and to raise and to love. And they loved us with an everlasting love. You know, when we think about criminals in the world and we think about people that, uh, who do evil, it's hard to love those people. Yet somehow, Mothers are able to love them because they are their children. And they look past the failures. They look beyond the faults. They look through all that goes wrong in their lives. And what they see is a child, their child, a child of God, merciful and great, a gift of God that he has given to them. 
and they raise that child and they love that child and many with an unconditional love and some you know it's it's hard to imagine and and, and sometimes it's hard to to say but uh, I, i've seen some children some babies who they weren't very pretty when they were children they grew up they were like ugly ducklings that blew up grew up into beautiful swans but their mothers did not see anything but beauty in them. All they saw was a precious child that God had given to each one of them. And all through the Bible, we are told of mothers. The book of Ruth tells us of Naomi and her love and care for Ruth, who was not her daughter, but her daughter-in-law, not her daughter by birth, but she loved her as if she were. My grandmother raised me until I was nine years old. She was mom to me. I grew up calling her mom, and she was mom. And even to this day, though she has gone on to be with the Lord, I lovingly remember her as mom because during those formative years, those years when I began school, those years when I would come home crying and, and disheartened, disappointed, hurt, it was always mom who was there. It was mom who took me into her arms and loved me. It was mom who comforted me. It was mom who looked at me with loving eyes and said, it's all right. I love you. You're home. You're safe. And I felt her love. And though we didn't have a lot of money, we had love. We had food on our table, a warm home, a clean place to live. And we had the love of a mom, a woman who sacrificed to give me the things that I would, no, would not be able to have because my mother had, had left and, and gone to Cleveland, Ohio to work and she would send money to mom to help raise me. And mom raised me and my cousin Sherry. And I remember growing up and, and thinking that uh, I never wanted to leave her. I always wanted to be there. And my mother somehow, she was always mother to me, but she wasn't mom. And in a large way that uh, she hard, had a hard time getting over that and, and dealing with it. And I remember we had a discussion one time and she said, you never call me mom. You always call me mother. And I couldn't explain to her what it was, but that it was mom who had been there during those years. It was mom who had raised me. It was mom who had loved me. It was mom who had nursed me, who had fed me, who had clothed me, who had sacrificed for me, who had disciplined me. And I had a different view of mother, though I loved her and, and still do to this day. She has gone on also to be with the Lord. But she was my birth mother, but she was never there during those formative years. And I think many of us can relate to women, whether they're aunts or whether they're close neighbors or whether they are grandparents who were like second moms to us, who were women who loved us, who nurtured us, who embraced us and gave to us the love that God had given to them. And even when Mary was to give birth to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, God had sent the angel Gabriel to her. And he said, Mary, you are the favored one of God. And though she did not understand, she readily accepted and said, may I accept God's will and his purpose for me. And then when Jesus was hanging on the cross there at Calvary, and Mary and John were there, and he looked down, and he said, Mary, behold your son. John, behold your mother. And the tradition of the church is that John took Mary into his own home and cared for her and loved her as his own mother until the day that she died. Yes, we have women in our lives who were not our birth mothers, but they were women who gave to us the love of a mother, who sacrificed on many levels for us, who lent to us a listening ear, who felt compassion in their hearts. And so we can relate to many different people 
in that regard, knowing that God himself has given us these women, these moms, these mothers, to love us, to hold us, to care for us, and to be there in our time of need. God created mothers. But you know, God's love for us, and I have a scripture passage from Isaiah, and he tells us in Isaiah 49, in the 15th verse, these words, can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will never forget you. You see, God, who created us in our mother's womb, who said to us in Jeremiah, he told Jeremiah, he said, I knew you before you were in your mother's womb. He knew us before we were born. He knew us before we were formed. He knew us because he created us. And he gave to us mothers. And in some instances, women who were not our birth mother who loved us as though we were her child and raised us and reared us and cared for us. But God himself never forgot us. God himself always watched over us, protected us, and kept us. But even as a mother will always cling to her child and never forget it or stop loving it, no matter what, so is God's love for you, his beloved child. Do we have that kind of love? Do we share that kind of love? You know, we as men, we who are of the male gender, we become fathers and daddies, but we don't know what it is to carry a child in a womb for nine months. We don't know what it is to feel that child living inside of us, kicking and moving. We don't know what it is to nurture that child and to hold that child, and to carry that child, and to give birth to that child, and to know that child was born inside of us, a gift given by God. And God has given to these women, these mothers, these moms, a love that looks beyond our faults. As a mother loves her child, even though that child may become a criminal, undeserving, she still loves it. We are undeserving of God's love, but he still offers his love to us. Are we as generous with our love? We are called to be, to love our neighbor as ourself, to reach out to those who are less fortunate, to be able to make a difference. But God has always given to them something special as well. God has given to them a love that is unconditional. Just as a mother puts no condition on her love to a nursing child, God puts no condition on loving us. We, in turn, should put no condition on loving one another. We can learn much from a mother's love, from the love of a mother who gave and sacrificed, a love that's enduring. Even as a mother's love endures all things, God's love endures even more. His love endures even to the cross. So too our love should endure for him. Our love should endure even to death, if so required. To prove to ourselves, to those around us, that it is God's love that is in us. We should be able to reach out and have a love, a love that is beyond, looks beyond faults, a love that endures, a love that is unconditional, a love that is always forgiving. Just as a mother's love forgives her child's faults, God's love forgives all things. Can we forgive one another? You know, he instructs us in the Lord's Prayer, forgive me my trespasses as I forgive those who trespass against me. Do we? 
We should love one another, not just as a mother loves her child, but as God loves us. A love that is everlasting. Remember, you are a child of God. So this Mother's Day, this special day that God has given us, for those of us whose mothers and moms have gone on, we can remember them. We can thank God for them. We can look at photographs. We can remember what it was like to, to smell a, a pie baking in the kitchen, to smell the fresh bread that they may have made, to feel the warm embrace of their hand upon our forehead when we were sick or with fever, to see the smile upon their face and hear the laughter that came from their throats, to hear those precious words. I love you. And to know that that love was a love that is everlasting, a love that was enduring, a love that was unconditional, a love that was always forgiving. So this Mother's Day, if you can still share your mother's love with her, do so. Call her. Go see her if you can. For those mothers who have gone home, to be with the Lord, they are now sharing the greatest love of all. They are in the presence of God himself, who is love. And so my message to you this day is to be thankful. This Mother's Day, this day that has been set aside, that was selected and, and has become an unofficial holiday, was started by two Methodist women from the Methodist women's group. They began Mother's Day. And so Father's Day began also. It is a special day set aside to remember God's love that was given to us in the form of a mother, a mom, a woman who loved us unconditionally who cared for us, who sacrificed for us, and who loves us still, even in our absence or her absence, that love is eternal. For love never wanes. Love endures all things. And so, precious child of God, give thanks to God the Father and think of how much your mother had loved you, loved you in the past, some of you loves you still because they are still with you. And be thankful that God's love is even greater than the love of a mother. For that love that she has in her heart for you came from a God who is love. Let us pray. Father, how great are you in all of thy ways. Lord, we thank you for the precious precious lives of our mothers, the precious lives of those, Lord, who sacrificed so much, who gave when they didn't have to give, who sat up with us sleepless nights, nursing us, rocking us, caring for us, who prayed for us, Lord, in our absence, who watched over us while they could. And when that time came for us to grow up and to leave home, they gave us over to you. And they said, Father, watch over my child, whom I love so dearly. I know, Lord, that I am here today because of a mother's love, because of the love of a mom who lifted me up in my absence, who prayed for me while I was in the military, who prayed for me when I was separated from her, who prayed for me when I was sick a woman that I could call any hour of any day and give to her, Lord, my thoughts, my pains, my doubts, my fears. And all I received in return was her love. Lord, we love you today. We thank you for your unconditional love. And we thank you for these special women that you had given to us to be mothers. Now let us join together to pray with the confidence of thy children, the Lord's Prayer. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. And until we can come together again, may the love of God, the joy and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit fill every heart and go with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all the sounds you stood by me, for all the truth that you made me see, for all the joy you brought to my life, for all
Oh.